Okay, so Monday is a big day, not just for science nerds, and I say that with all due respect, <laughs> but a lot of people are getting pretty fired up over the idea of this uh, eclipse that is going to be coming. Joining us in studio right now uh, is Sari Custer. She is the Chief of Science and Curiosity over at the Arizona Science Center. Thank you so much for being with us today. Thanks for having me. I'm excited to be here. Okay, so... Um, this doesn't happen all the time. Is that fair to say? It's fair to say. What's special about this eclipse? All right. So this particular eclipse is really exciting. First, because I, I want to address what you said. It's not just oh. the nerds. Uh, this is because everybody's excited about it. This yeah. is the type of event that gets people into science. So okay. the nerds, we love to have you drinking the Kool-Aid You're here. like, well, well, come on this, in. This the water's moment. fine. The water's okay, fine. Come right. on in. Yeah. Um, but this particular eclipse is special because it's one that is a total eclipse across North America. So multiple places in North America will be able to see a complete coverage with a total eclipse so that makes it pretty rare right i mean and and the, the i've seen like the the swath if you will they yeah. call it right it's going to kind of go from texas and kind of yeah. curve its way up along along the way what is going to be our view though out here in the great state of Arizona. So while folks that are in that swath that you mentioned, that 100 plus mile range, will be able to see total coverage. Here in Phoenix, we'll see about nine, excuse me, 94. I'm jumping ahead, I'm getting really excited. Okay. About 64% <laughs> coverage. Okay, Sorry. 64%, but yes. still a pretty good view. That's right, so you're gonna see that transit across the sun that's gonna end up looking like a, a Cheshire cat smile. It'll be a crescent smile when you, when you see that eclipse. Well, so you'll I, still see something significant. Now, I, I'm gonna ask a question. I think I know yeah. the answer. I'm not supposed to stare directly at it, am I? At no, <laughs> no. At no I, time should you <laughs> stare directly at the sun. Is that a good good rule of thumb? Uh, 100%. Even but, during an eclipse. And I heard you reference that if I said that, you'd kick me out because, <laughs> uh, yes, um, you have to have eye protection for this eclipse. Okay. It is never safe to stare at the sun. Even if you are in the path of totality, I would encourage you to always have your glasses on. There is a short fraction of time with total coverage that you could look at the sun because it's totally blocked but really just for safety uh, i would say always wear safe solar glasses and you brought us some thank you so very <gasps> we much we did what? we brought you some yeah we have some here we so. want to make sure that your eyes are protected so that you can safely see the eclipse thank people you. are gonna go nuts they're gonna be so excited <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> yeah and and well that, that is important you know i mean people hear these things and and they think they can just run outside and stare at the sun and again i'm gonna remind you Please don't. And don't do that. This it won't can, be the last time anyone says this to you. That's right. And it can permanently damage your vision. Ooh. So it's not just something like, oh, it's just bad because you can't see things well. It is permanent damage that could be caused. So you really want to be careful. Um, if you have solar glasses, you also want to make sure that you have legit solar glasses. There is an ISO number that's printed on the glasses. So okay. it's an ISO 12312-2. It should so be like printed. So like regular sunglasses don't cut it? No, regular glasses do not cut it. Got so it. the material in these glasses is special. Okay. So uh, it's a, a special polymer that has a, I'm not even going to get into it. It's yeah. a special coating. Um, but You're getting into the science I, yeah. nerd See, part again. Nerd like, into I don't know. It's got stuff in it. You, know. so you want to make sure that it, it eliminates the light. So matter of fact, when you look through them, I mean, you can't see anything unless wow. you're staring at the sun. Okay. And regular glasses just don't cut it. I understand. That's uh, Sari Custer, by the way, Chief of Science and Curiosity at the Arizona Science Center. She's got the Center. best title ever. Uh, yeah, you absolutely do. I mean, the Arizona Science Center is an amazing place to begin with. What, help me understand a little bit. The, I know these don't come along all the time, yeah. but, but there is some uniqueness to all, like every eclipse is a little bit different. Is that a good way to put it? Yeah, that's a great way to put it. Uh, matter of fact, so roughly, every, let's say every other year, don't quote me on exactly that timeline, but there's a either a partial eclipse, an annual eclipse, or a total eclipse. It just depends on where on earth you are to be able to see it. Sure, so makes sense. This particular eclipse is that total eclipse across North America where we can see it, but um, the next one won't happen, a total eclipse in North America until, oh my gosh, like 24 2044, 2045, when really? you really can see one in North America. In 2045, there's one that's going to come up all the way across the United States again and uh, up into, well, well, crossing North America. Yeah. But we'll see a great partial eclipse in 2029 from Phoenix. That's going to oh, have okay. even more coverage. Let's get, let's, get, I, I, I got to get on the calendar. <laughs> I'm not going to open a hotel between now and then because I, I've been I've been reading about uh, uh, the price gouging that's going on from all the eclipse tourists, yes. you know, showing up in these 
tiny little towns, uh, many of them out in the middle of nowhere, just so they can get a great view of it. Right. Well, what a great place to be, right? We're looking for uh, wide open spaces, places to gather. This goes back to where we say, drink the Kool-Aid. Come on, come to the place where it's awesome to see this eclipse. Uh, So you are seeing folks who maybe normally wouldn't um, come out to a science event. It's a massive science event that they're they're coming in droves to because it's so few, uh, far between these few events to be able to see them. So for some folks, it can be a once in a lifetime opportunity to get out to the total eclipse. Sari, uh, let's say I wanted to watch the eclipse, but I wanted to watch it with some other people, maybe some knowledgeable folks along the way. What are you guys doing down at the Arizona Science Center? All right. Well, we want, nerd or not, we want you down at Arizona Science Center on Monday, April 8th at 9 o'clock. We open our doors. We've got events happening out in Heritage Square with activities so you can learn about the sun, learn what the eclipse is, uh, engage with our team to learn a little bit more from our experts about uh, everything that's solar science. We have free glasses available for folks. So if you haven't been able to get some, come on down to Arizona Science Center. We have safe, free solar glasses. We'll have our solar telescopes up. We'll be able to look at the uh, the eclipse together. We'll let you know what's going on. That eclipse starts just after 10 o'clock, goes to maximum coverage right at, uh, just before 11.30. I was going to say, it's really a long kind of eclipse, right? It is. Two it, hours and something? Yeah, it ends uh, just around 12.30, just after 12.30, okay. so that whole morning. And what's really great is if you're coming down, because we've got Final Four happening in town, <sighs> if you're coming down, that activity starts later in the day. This is the perfect thing to round out your day. Come down early, get good parking, come on and watch the eclipse with us in Heritage Square, and be right there for Final Four. And final, all the Final Four fest, fan fest is right down there. Yes, it's all happening. Yeah. I guess I'm ready for it. Now, my last question for you. Um, Come Monday, during that two hours, will it it seem like there... Will will it get darker outside? Will it be like, oh, it, it, it feels like dusk or something? I mean, like, what will it look like... For the for those that are going to sure. forget there's an eclipse, they're going to be walking <laughs> around going, "The heck happened today? Something's going on out there." So if you were in the path of totality, it would really feel like a, a moment of nighttime. If it, we had much more coverage, it is going to feel a little bit darker. So sort of like when you have a cloud that goes over the sun sure. for a moment, it feels a little bit darker, but it's definitely still daytime. It's going to feel a lot like that. Okay, mm, yeah. I'm we, here for it. That's really right. appreciate it. And by the way, can I give you a, a slight little thing with your name? I'm not saying you should change your name, Sarah, because <laughs> it's a fantastic name. Thank you. But every time I say your name. My phone thinks I'm saying Siri. Oh my gosh, so you're clear. this happens all the time just at so, work. Just so you're clear. Folks calling out for me, hey Siri, yeah. I need something, and their Siri pops up. There it is. Yes. It just did it again. Thank you very much. <laughs> She's Siri Custer, the Chief of Science and Curiosity at the Arizona Science Center. Remember, 9 a.m. Monday, you can go down there, be with all the others, and experience this, uh, uh, for some people, once in a lifetime, certainly yeah. once in a long time event. That's right. All right. Thank you so much. No, thank you for letting me come today. Oh, you're quite, quite welcome. Thanks for watching Outspoken with Bruce and Gatos. Tap to watch more from KTAR News and click the button in the middle to subscribe.